the way I look at life when you're married, you are one. You're not two anymore. You are one. And we work together. Everything we do together. We go shopping together. I come home from work, she's in the kitchen with the kids. I take the kids out, go to the park, get her off her hand. And I say this because I sit down this morning and I study it and I says, I got to bring it to light, you know. Women work is not easy. I was living in Mountain View Avenue and I accidentally met her one night at a party, a party party. And I just says, when I met her, I says, hold her hand and then she didn't. You know, you know <laughs> in those days, you know, you hold a young lady's hand that you don't know. I don't know what you're holding me for, things like that, you know. So I just um, says um, to myself, she didn't hear me. Said this person, I think I want to spend the rest of my life with her. Just and by a hold of hand? Well, while, while I hold her hand and walking across to my sister and my niece was sitting a little way away. So I um, took her around and my sister and my niece looked up, bowed their head. My niece pulled away aside and says, sit between mom and her. That was it. We took off from there. And we went on. Mrs. Brian, why why didn't you flash his hand off as he went on? I just didn't. I, just, I wasn't used to really going out and having anybody really appeal. So I thought, you know, to be respectful, I just didn't. And then he took me to sit with his sister and his niece. And that was it. And so we started to see each other after that. And we dated, go out, met my, he met my parents and they were all right. I was very young then, I was about um, 16. And we, we got married by 17. His sister sent for him to the UK. And after our wedding, a week later, he went to the UK and I was left, I was pregnant. He sent for me after I went up with my first child a year and something later. Of course, when I got there, I got pregnant again. <laughs> so I had another son. And from there we went on. It was very difficult, really, living in a poor country, not having real families near us. We have to make our life for ourselves. Yes. Everything. We have to. That's why we stick together to do everything mm -hmm. and had the children. But we get to the habit where we do everything together. And cooking is helping. And even now he does. He likes to be in the kitchen. And he likes to season the meat and do everything. Mm -hmm. And we just keep on doing everything we just do together. So we just grew up together to depend on each other. <laughs> That's when, the way it is. When the, the England life was rough. It was rough. We didn't have any fun. I have my sister and my brother-in-law there, but they were, you know, on their own. We were on our own. We got there and we were on our own. So we just worked together. The way I look at life when you're married, you are one. You're not two anymore. You are one. And we work together. Everything we do together. We go shopping together. I come home from work. She's in the kitchen with the kids. I take the kids out, go to the park, get her off her hand. And I say this because I sit down this morning and I study it and I says, I got to bring it to light, you know. Women work is not easy. We men think that we we'll do all the work and our work is hard, but our work is not hard. The women work with kids in the home. They are the more the breadwinner. 
because they got to do the housework, they got to do the washing. You don't, we don't wash our kids' clothes together with ours. Everything was separately. And some of us men, when we come home from work, we tired and things. We kick our shoes off with our green or sit down in the living room. Darling, our <laughs> wife, your, what's your name is? Could you bring me a drink? No, I never do that. I go in the kitchen, I want a drink, I get to the fridge, I take a drink out. I take the baby that she will have the baby in her arm and one foot in her leg. I get the pram, I put the baby in the pram, I take the other one, put it in and walk to the park. Let her out her, you know. When I got to the UK and had my other baby, it was Christmas and mm -hmm. we were so sick to see what Christmas was like. Grey skies, the state of the place. When I heard my first Christmas card, I cried because I was missing home. And having this baby just after Christmas, as I tell you, we went through a very hard time in life. The house caught fire. We were living at his sister's house. And it's, these houses are four floors, basement, middle, and two up. And you, at that time, you just have a room. People were just renting a room in, in the 50s. You just you didn't have a flat, it's one room. And how I know there was a fire, there was a young man in another room who worked nights. And I heard him say, Polly, Polly, fire. When I opened the door, I'm in the room, the room at the front of the, the room, and there was smoke. I had the baby. He was just a few days old. This was, he was born on the 5th of December, and the fire was, the fire was on the 27th. So, this young man ran through the house and went outside. And I said to him, Daryl, can you help me with the baby? But he went. I shut the door because the smoke was taking us. Anyway, I went back in the room and there's a window in that room that usually it just wouldn't go up. I put the baby on a table in a wrap, a white blanket and the little boy, the other one standing there. And I said, oh Lord, what am I gonna do now? And I pushed the window, the window went up because there was a gentleman who living on the floor under me at the front, knew I was up there and he's trying to get hold of me. But I had a fire going, drying baby's clothes. And we had rediffusion those days where you would pay two and six. That's all we had. So I didn't even hear him calling me, but I knew the fire. So when I pushed the window up, I broke through the window and I, this man's name was Blake. And I said, Blakey, I can't come down the stairs. Can you catch the children for me? He said, yes. I said, I'm gonna throw the baby down. Will you catch him for me? He said, yes. I let the baby go in this white blanket. And when I let him go, I said, Blakey, did you catch the baby? He said, yes. I said, I'm going to throw Norris out now. Will you catch him for me? I held him under the arm. He was about two years old then. I let him go. I said, Vicky, did you catch the baby? He said, yes. I said, I'm going to jump now. Somebody catch me. I just slipped the window and I just step over the window. Those houses, you walk up the steps to get in there. Middle floor it was something like this. Don't don't understand. And yeah. to get to the middle floor. And I jumped through the window. And then I know I hit. It's like everything I, I was I think I, I said, oh god, I'm gone now. Anyway, fire brigade came. They took me on the side of the road, took me to the hospital where I had a baby. They checked me out. They noticed that 
check my home, nothing. They check my leg, nothing. And they sent me home after. Mr. Byrne, um, going back to that recollection of getting the phone call yeah. about your wife being injured, um, what was your state of mind back then? Because this is your love of your life and you're not there with her. All I want to know is to get there and to see that they were all right. I went and there was a train on the platform and I asked the train, please look at the gate. Can you hold that train for me? My wife is had a fire and burnt out and she's in hospital with the kids and I don't know what happened to them. And he waved to them and pointed to me. And I run under, you have to go under and mm -hmm. go over to the other side. I don't know how I got the rain. I got on the train and that train was one stop. Straight to Paddington? Paddington. Or Westburn Park? It's not about Westburn Park for me, just God sent him to stop it for me there. You know, when they told me that she's in hospital, I kept calm because I know God is on my side, they're all right. When they were in hospital, I know they were all right. We went through all of that and we struggled. We worked, I worked, and gave the children to be minded and all that. And we work and work. So you went um to England yeah. for a better better life or better something? Oh, yes. yes. So when would you have come back to Jamaica? We came back to Jamaica in 90, 90, 1990. 1990. 1990. Well I came home uh, we're visiting 85. Visit to visit. And we came, I came home fifty-eight and bought this place and leave it with her sister to look after it for us and we went back and carry on working until we said so going home now, just take her in retirement and come home. The coal was getting into us. Yeah, we decided we were coming home. We were coming home when it was Gilbert, but we couldn't make we it. couldn't make it. So we left it another two years. And while we retired, we, we took early retirement. So we got a little job to keep us well because of Gilbert. So we worked at a little the Henry Management College and just to keep us going and then till we finally managed to come home. This little lady here. I call her my queen. I call her my world. I know I'm going to call her my everything. Because she stand by me. I was perfect. But she made me the man I am today. And I'm proud of her. What would you say have kept you together so long? Just sharing each other sharing. with all that we've been through. Just sharing. We know what we've been through in life. And it has been very difficult. A lot of it has been very difficult. And we give God thanks every day. Every day. For because it. it's because of the Lord that I think we have managed to survive. All that we have survived. But we will never forget the bad things. So But have have the good that you shared together outweigh the bad you say? Yes. Oh yes, I yes. think so, yes. Yeah. Well after having that, you know, 2021 was our 66th wedding anniversary, the 21st of July. And you see the robbery that went worldwide. It was us. Where this man, he's reversing the car in, and this man walked in, grabbed my bag, threw me to the ground, smashed my face, and went up with all the money. It was, it was a bad. Bank job. I think somebody, two women in the bank must have arranged it. Mr. Brown, you alluded to it earlier about your advice to young men, but I, I want to get a broader perspective um, about your advice to young couples who aspire to be married for as long as you both have. But what would you say to them? I would say, as I said before, when you get married, you're one. Work together as one. Both of you working when there's a child in the house, one or two. She cannot work. The house work 
is harder than the job. You go out and do every day because you go out, you get your break, you have your break, you come back and you do your work. Your wife at home have to cater for the children at home. As soon as they say, ah, you have to go, they wait, you have to change them. You have to do the housework, you have to wash, you have to hire, you have to look after the babies. Mm -hmm. So, young people, when you get married, just put both heads together, work together, help each other. Don't fight. But that's not if there's, an, if there's an argument, slightly like argument, a misunderstanding, I should say, one walk away. Because I do. I don't argue with her. We do. We do have arguments sometimes. Yes. We don't agree on something. You, you cannot have a marriage without some misunderstanding. I don't call it a comment. I call it misunderstanding. But if you're going to argue with me, and I'm going to argue back with you, I know the ladies, they got some hot words for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know where those words come from, but they have to have it. And all men, especially Jamaican, Caribbean men, the first thing they do, you tell me that, boom. No, I never appeal. Here she is here now, she can tell you if I ever, ever eat her in all the years of my life. No? Together. Never. Thank God for that. Never, never get to that because the argument comes, I walk away, I turn, you see there, my TV there, my radio there. We live on here, we I live here. We live here, we eat here, we see everything here. Everything right here. I don't argue. Mm -hmm. Because I used to have a bad temper and have to, because my daughter, sure, she took it away, she was born. I don't know where it went, but my temper went. Gets a soft heart. <laughs> Gets it off me, you know, so. I thought to all young people today, work together when you get married, stay together, help each other out. You come home from work, kids are in the house, you have been job, you take you look after. If you don't have anywhere to take them for a walk, take them in the, in another room, play with them in there, get the toys out, play with them in there, let the mother get on it, what she's doing. Mm -hmm. That's what I do all the time. Mrs. Brennan, what, what's your take on having a long relation, long-lasting relationship. Patience takes a lot of patience and kindness. You have to know how to resist some things. Peace, if they want peace. But I don't agree with people being abused. And oh, when I see this, it really hurts and how some women could stay in that situation year in, year out, and still having children, I really don't know. Sometimes when I see it on the TV, I say, Christ, I'm a man myself, but Christ, my man. What's up with him? Why do you have to do that? He didn't love that woman to do that, you know. But it it's hurts me. It's so different now with you know, the people. And I would say for her now, she is the best thing that happened to me. She's an excellent wife all over. 